0.8.1 is gold shells for credits, guys. You're treading on very thin ice there. You know, it's like the first kiss. Was it good or bad? Depends on who you kiss, Yura. Doesn't matter. You'll still remember even if it was bad. I don't want to remember your first kiss. Okay, I can share what I remember about the French vehicles when they appeared. We were simple players back then, so we made a clan and decided about how was the best way to play them. It was basically the first mechanic in a game. The first that was different from normal vehicles, and nobody knew what to do with them, and no one knew how to use them. We could see how some players would go forward and get destroyed in some stupid ways. They didn't understand what to do with them. Some were the opposite. They would dominate the game. And if you gathered a platoon of such players, you'd keep your plus 70% win rate. It was great, but then they were nerfed greatly. I remember that from the point of view of balancing, it was some unimaginable torture to figure out what was happening. What were the stats, what stats were needed, where to look, where to go, what to change, and what to nerf. Because back then, we didn't have much experience, and to be fair, there wasn't much data either. Now there is much more to analyze. The statistics used to be collected once per month in Excel. There was this one Excel file that had the number of battles, the total win rate, and that's all. Nothing more. And we had to do something with that data. No, there was much more there, not just the win rate. There was also average damage and average experience broken down to some extent. But yeah, it's not the same as it is now. Sure, but we still quickly came to the conclusion that we had to nerf them. The question was to what extent, and we didn't manage to do it the first try. Yeah, about six months passed. Well, we were, so to say, cutting off one head at a time, as I recall. We'd cut off one, they'd still dominate, cut off another, they'd continue dominating. And so we just cut off some more. That's how it went. I remember I was trying to play against the French vehicles, and it was quite all right to play against them with the E50 if you drove down a hill on Himmelsdorf. Especially when perks were added and controlled impact allow you to ram them for 900. The poor, fragile Frenchman could maybe survive two more shots, and then he was toast. Well, there were quite a number of different changes, and the perks were very influential and changed a lot. I remember the introduction of perks by the pain in the back it was, because at the time, I had about 100 vehicles, and all of them needed their perk set. I remember I had about three hours of time to spare, so I opened up the client and started clicking on all the crew member icons as I had to choose new perks, read about them, and figure everything out. In short, it was horrible. People, can you hear me? Golden joystick. Uh, I remember golden joystick very well. Probably because it was the first time simple Belarusian boys and girls encountered upper class life in London. During the ceremony, there was a very fancy setup. Setup. Dimmed lights, expensive food, expensive furniture. There go my earphones when I gesture too much. Men in tuxedos and women in evening gowns. And there was us from abroad. And we were 22, 23, maybe 25 tops. We made a quick run to the local H&M, brought ourselves the most budget-friendly formal jackets and trousers, and got ready to receive the award. And when we were at the table, we came to an agreement. Victor was the idea generator, and he said this. They're going on stage with only one representative from a company, maybe two, but we will all go together because we don't know when the next time we'll be at this ceremony. And as it turned out, we would get there the next year, and twice more after that. So after we were announced as the best free-to-play or best MMO, I don't quite remember to be honest, we got in a group and all six of us rushed towards the stage. Someone got lost along the way, probably because they were eating some dessert. Come on, let's go! So we went up, waved our hands, said hello to our parents. 
expressed thank you to everyone we could remember and went to celebrate. Hey, everybody. Hello, friends. I am Victor Keesley, speaking from London. Hello, tankers. Five minutes ago, World of Tanks received the Golden Joystick as the best MMO of the year. It's the most prestigious award in the gaming industry, and it's ours. But, as a matter of fact, it's yours. We received millions and millions of votes to support us. You made this victory possible. A huge thanks to you. Hooray! We wanted to make absolutely sure that our game was free and that you could still get special shells without paying a penny, no matter if you were an enthusiast or an amateur player. I remember we started implementing gold shells for credits based on this premise. I remember the Object 268 that had 400-something of penetration with its heat shell, and you could just engage vehicles head-on. Back then, you had to search the forums for the blueprints of the IS-4 to figure out how to consistently penetrate it and learn about where to shoot its armor. There was nothing like guides. Everybody was figuring it out on the fly or shooting it from all angles in training mode. But here you could simply fire away and not think about all that. Of course, you would lose some credits, some but the feeling it gave you. Gold shells for credits was at about the same level as Sixth Sense in terms of influence. Not the same, but probably in the ballpark. And they also changed the battle thanks to them being more open and accessible. Basically, everybody started shooting gold shells for credits. Then the ridiculous penetration values were nerfed. I remember when Mikhail and I were discussing what to cut and were using those tables. Special shells nowadays just aren't the same as they were in 2013. As I said, they were simply imbalanced. You could have 150 base penetration and 250 to 300 for the special shell, which just changed everything. We were doing it together, weren't we? Yes. And I remember you... And there were multiple iterations, every update. I remember you showing me those tables, and I was telling you what I liked and what I disliked. We were just trying to do something that everyone could like. It was quite interesting, too. I had this thing back then that I was writing everything down on, and I'd show you all the pages. <laughs> yeah, I remember Misha trying to run away from it. He'd look at it and say, I'll check it out later. It was hard for you to run away since we had our desks close together. Let me continue telling the story that Arthur started. I remember that trip to England. It was November. We were flying there to present the British vehicle branch as well. And then we had Golden Joystick right away. We had been nominated, but we didn't know yet if we would get it or not. But we were invited to the conference. The whole trip probably took about 10 days, and we were flying from Minsk in November. I took my suitcase, but I was lightly dressed so that I'd be comfortable on the plane. I just had a shirt and some light jacket or hoodie. Then my suitcase was lost and didn't make it with me. On top of that, they couldn't find it at all afterwards. And that was it. It had been lost along with all my clothes. It's probably still flying between countries. Yeah, I had my press conference suit in it. You know, the tie and whatnot. The suit, the shoes, the tie, everything. And I had everything in the suitcase, all my warm clothes for the event, because I knew we'd be on a tank range where there would be dirt everywhere since it was November. And with rainy weather, nothing good would come out of it. So, on the first day, my clothes were ruined and covered in dirt. We spent about the next four days there, and the temperature was about 6, 7 degrees Celsius. My colleagues would share some clothes with me. In the end, I finally got to London. I had to get to the conference, and we would arrive about three hours before it started. So I got there, went to the store right away, and spent my remaining money on a suit. And I got dressed on the way to the conference. I just gathered the dirty clothes I had worn on the range and tossed them into a trash bin because they were absolutely unsalvageable. 
and I managed to get to the conference while changing my clothes in the cab with the driver. What an unforgettable experience. What do you mean with the driver? Was he changing clothes too? The driver was trying to look like he wasn't watching me change. <laughs> Along with the expansion to Tier 10, a rebalance happened, if you could say that. Then there was a nerf, of course, then a second nerf, a third one, and then the RD reached the higher tiers. I was playing when Tier 7 was added. The GW Panther was my favorite vehicle ever. There were the Americans, sure, but I liked the German vehicles the most, and I didn't respect the other ones. I played only Germans, so I chose the GW Panther. I could simply drive around the map and just pop turrets off one after another without the artillery reticle. That was until the first nerf, when the accuracy of the gun was reduced. But the HP hadn't been cut just yet. So you could have four to five frags per battle with no sweat and enjoy your life. And then tier 10s were added and I researched all of them. There were pretty mean French ones. French ones, yeah, but there were none back then. Then when the Lorraine appeared, it was absolutely wild and I switched to it. So you ditched the Germans and switched to the French? For Artie, yes. Because I tried the GWE 100. Played two battles, then said, screw it, I'm not playing this anymore. Well, it was nerfed in the following update. I remember we had a platoon of Lorraines and we'd bully heavies all around the map, driving together and pushing everyone into a corner. Yeah, we did that too as a platoon. We'd go in as a platoon, but since we could rarely get three people, we used to drive with a colleague in pairs. And we even had this belief where if we had fewer than seven frags between us per battle, it was a bad battle. A proper battle would start with seven frags or more. So it was a normal thing for us to have about six to seven frags per battle on average. I remember when we added British artillery, Sergei Berkatovsky rushed into the room shouting, Who balanced the bishop? I carefully raised my head and said, I did. He asked, Have you played it stock? I replied, I did. And he stated, But it's unplayable. I suggested, let me play 50 battles in it. If the win rate is about 50%, we don't change the stock setup. So I spent the rest of the day playing 50 battles, and I probably have it in my statistics in the same state today at about 50% win rate. And the next day I go and show Sergei saying, here you go, the bishop's playable. No need to change the stock one. The top one was already okay. I remember those years. I think it was in 2013 when the iconic VK3601H was nerfed to its final state and converted to a heavy. It was nerfed in several iterations. I still have a 78% win rate with it, with about 1,500 battles. It really was an iconic vehicle. It's a story about gold shell users. Yeah, it dealt more damage than a normal heavy would. 165, if I remember. So you could do some real magic with it. I remember a cool story about when we were at E3. I think it was in 2012 and we had a competition there. It was for everyone. They could play on our PC and the best player of the day would be the one with the most points. People would get a laptop and an iPad, and so on and so forth. Basically, they would get various prizes, and they were Americans. We already had tested it on our range, in other words, the RU server, and everything was in order. So there I was, watching them. The points they earned were for experience, not for damage dealt, but for experience earned. And they were getting about 1,600 to 1,700 experience, which was enough to get a laptop. I was just watching all this. I had fought battles where I earned about three to 3.5 thousand experience. So I told them, let me show you how to properly play the game. And when I got there, they showed me on this main screen on our stage. Someone was even streaming it all online. I got my VK ready, earned about 3,300 experience and nine or 10 frags. I just dominated everybody there. <laughs> and I said, come on guys, it's easy. Then the guys would use the same VK as I did the next three days at the expo, using the same setup as me.
With the introduction of new rendering, we added new map-making technology. This new tech made everything very pretty. But adding this greatly affected gameplay because those details were generally made of micro-terrain that was in places where it was needed and sometimes where it was not. It had been added everywhere, so we were smoothing it all out and removing unnecessary terrain. Smoothing everything out took a very long time over many years. Internally, it was called Operation Iron. Iron, as in iron out all the bumps on the map. Yeah, it all went into 8.0. Either you jumped off a bridge, turned over, drowned, or some other nonsense. When you couldn't even drown because of two radio operators, I remember it was unlimited because of double operators. That was funny. I think the physics bugs will always be remembered fondly. I remember when physics was released, there was a bug for jumping, not falling. If the wrong height was configured and you jumped a meter high, it thought you were already falling. So you could be destroyed in a very unexpected place if you were driving fast and bumped into something. Those were catapults. They called them catapults because they'd start throwing vehicles into the air and over buildings if you drove somewhere you weren't supposed to. You'd be thrown hundreds of meters high. I think a classic was the Siegfried line with its pillboxes. Yeah, those pillboxes and other unbreakable objects could launch you to kingdom come. That was really funny back then. And the coolest thing was that the players had fun. When you found a bug like that, you didn't care if you were destroyed or not. Especially if you crushed someone. At least you got to fly! The tech trees were rotated around that time, right? You know, when the vertical trees became horizontal? Misha, why did we decide to do that again? Because a guy came to us and said, I see we have new vehicle branches planned for the future. I looked at them and the new vehicle branches don't fit our current interface. What do we do? We were like, oh, what do we do? Let's go to the UI guys. Then the UI guys were like, what do we do indeed? Well, this looks right, this doesn't. Let's rotate the tree. It will be ideologically right and ideologically convenient. Now we have about two or three branches per year, right? Back then, it was every update. Updates were coming out every couple of months. There was no end to them. A map and vehicles. A map and vehicles. Yeah, I was configuring those vehicles and I didn't see the light of day. I was just working on one after another after another. I was like, my gosh, when will it end? Historical battles were also very... <coughs> fun. Yeah. Yes. We added many low-tier vehicles for the players to have something to play historical battles in. Well played.